I first laid eyes on Terra Nil during a Steam demo event around a year ago. It feels like the sort of game perfect for a demo too, a game where it's hard to describe how you play because there's not anything out there quite like it. But after about 20 minutes with the Terra Nil demo back then, I decided I'd seen enough. The game had won me over completely, and I didn't need to spoil it for myself any more than I had to while I eagerly awaited the release date. Terra Nil could be classified as a city builder, a strategy game, or a puzzle game, and all three tags are prominently front and center on its Steam page. But none of those tags alone gives much meaning to what the game is, so allow me to clarify, Terra Nil is, in theory at least, literally the opposite of a city builder. It's a game about ecosystem restoration, taking a dead, barren earth tainted by human neglect and using a variety of futuristic eco-technology to restore nature to its former brilliance. And then, crucially, it's about balancing the ecosystem to restore a natural harmony, recycling every one of your machines, and leaving without a trace to let nature do its thing. Terranil comes to us from Free Lives, a developer known for games like Broforce, Gorn, and Genital Jousting. Terranil is similar to these games in absolutely zero ways, so for those of you hoping to terraform a landscape so you can populate it with families of tiny, disembodied dicks that form paramilitary organizations who fight each other to the death, I am sorry to disappoint you. For everyone else, you should really, seriously play Terra Nil. Let's start with the obvious. The game's vibrant, hand-painted artwork is gorgeous. You begin each run of a particular biome on little more than a slab of barren rock with some procedurally generated topography. From here, the game slowly introduces you to its slew of tools for ecological terraforming, such as wind turbines, geothermal power stations, and seismic detonators. As you unlock more advanced tools, the placement of each one will instantly transform the landscape around it with grassy plains, lush green forests, or glittering coral reefs, among other things. Not only is this instant gratification immensely satisfying from a visual standpoint, but it helps the game feel alive. When you zoom in on your scenery, you'll see grass swaying in the breeze, tree branches rustling, and, once they show up, animals like penguins, pandas, elk, and bears foraging and roaming their habitats. The developers have done the game tremendous favors with its sound design, too. As you slowly transform your cold hunk of earth into something lively, the soundtrack changes. At first, there is minimal music mostly ambient wind and the occasional metallic thrum of machinery. But as you place equipment, you'll hear a chirp of lively piano keys. And as you fertilize soil, plant grass, create forests, wetlands, lagoons, reefs, tundra, and more, the soundtrack comes to life in sync with the scenery. Before long, you'll be looking at a vividly green landscape with rousing, beautiful melodies accompanying the view. And as you move your mouse pointer to different parts of the scene, it acts as a sort of microphone. You'll hear the clink of your machinery, wind flowing through the trees, or cheerful grunts of wildlife life as you hover over them. It's this part of the presentation that I feel could have been accentuated more. The change in sound effects while hovering over a particular part of your biome is subtle and hard to notice unless you're really listening for it. Between that and the rain effect, which looks a bit of a Vaseline smear at times, the presentation has its minor quirks, but overwhelmingly, Terranil is a game that's peaceful and meditative, often evoking vibes from other low-stress city builders like Dorf Romantic or Islanders. The comparison to those games doesn't quite stop there either. There's no story in Terra Nil, just a mission to take these desolate chunks of land and create something out of seemingly nothing. You begin each biome with a fixed pool of resources that can be spent on a number of important tools to begin the terraforming process. While your equipment comes at a resource cost, certain ones like irrigators, which grow grass out of fertile land in a formation of your choosing, give you more resources for each tile of land you successfully revitalize. But I don't want to give you the wrong impression about what Terra Nil is, because it takes its mechanics a lot further than the more casual games I just named, and is all the better for it. The irrigators are a great example. You can't just immediately place some grass and call it a day. You first need a power source. In some regions, that may be as simple as placing a wind turbine on a hunk of stone. In the volcanic glacier region, for example, it instead means strategically placing seismic detonators to form lava pools to build geothermal power plants on. Each biome is distinctly different and has completely new requirements and challenges to get accustomed to, as well as different tools to deal with them. Using these tools is a much simpler matter than it sounds. Initially, the in-game guidebook, dubbed A Beginner's Guide to Ecosystem Restoration, hits you with a lot of eco-technological lingo that may make you feel like you've been hired for this job based on the numerous lies in your resume. But, every piece of machinery comes with a simple description of its function and requirements, as well as some detailed hand-drawn diagrams in the guidebook. 
And only as you demonstrate proficiency with each one does new equipment unlock and grant you that little bit more freedom. Once you're comfortable with your tools and how they interact with one another, the game becomes a careful balancing act of ensuring everything you build is serving some purpose so that you don't run out of resources before your landscape becomes whole. In practice, if I were to describe games Terranil is most similar to, it's probably an odd mix of the aforementioned chill landscape puzzler Islanders mixed with the more serious scientific spin of something like Paraspora, and I promise you it's a downright masterful combo. Making the land thrive again is just the first phase of each of Terranil's four biomes. Phase 2 requires you to fulfill the biome's ecosystem requirements. This will depend on which biome you're in, but for example, you may need to have a sufficient balance of reefs, beaches, mangroves, and rainforests to ensure the tropical biome attracts a natural diversity of life. You do this by altering and building on top of everything you created in Phase 1, and accordingly, some things will need to be moved, destroyed, or completely altered in order to make it work. Once you have that all sorted out, Phase 3 involves attracting animals to the biome so that it will maintain a natural harmony once you're gone, then recycling all of your tools and carefully disposing of them to leave nature unharmed and let it do its thing. The second and third phases also provide you with more functions, new goals, and all sorts of optional objectives that make the whole restoration process click. Some of the optional objectives may include getting your biome to reach an ideal mix of high humidity and low temperature to allow snowfall to start, or set up ideal conditions for penguins to roam around on ice caps. I especially like the process for attracting new fauna to your freshly built habitats. It functions as a puzzle where you build a research station with the ability to scan your environment for various creatures with a hint or two about what they need to thrive, and only once you scan and the exactly correct set of conditions do you actually unlock the creature it describes. As you can tell by what I've said so far, every level of Terra Nil has a distinct beginning, middle, and end, and there's no such thing as an endless mode where you can keep building and keep growing. Such a mode certainly won't be added as post-launch DLC either, because it's completely antithetical to what the developers are trying to accomplish. Everything you build is a means to an end, and often a means to a means to an end. Sometimes you'll need to burn down a section of your beautiful tundra in order to make ashy soil where forests can grow. And and once you're all done, you'll need to set up a monorail network that will allow you to recycle all of your technology and ensure nothing unnatural is left. This phase can threaten to be a bit finicky, but the game's clear indicators around what objects you may have missed ensure you're not likely to get frustrated. The game does a fantastic job of giving you the tools and knowledge to ensure the end result is something beautiful, in a way that feels both predetermined by the designers and still made true by your own intervention. When you've gathered the last of your recycled materials in a biome and launched out of it, you can choose between a continue button and an appreciate button, where the latter will jump around the different habitats in your biome to admire your handiwork or take screenshots before leaving it to blossom on its own. And thus comes the biggest caveat. If you're judging Terra Nil by city builder standards, you may find it to be a bit short. Making my way through all four biomes took me about five hours, though there is some replayability in the form of higher difficulty levels and alternate versions of each stage that adds some twists. It's easy to get an extra several hours of playtime this way, but I can already envision the negative Steam reviews about how their dicks are longer than this game or whatever, so best to get ahead of that. In this sense, it may be more appropriate to view Terra Nil as a strategic puzzle game, one with a very clear order of progression but a lot of freedom in how you accomplish your goals. I'm not bothered by the length of the game at all because it feels the right size to make an impact and not overstay its welcome while providing extra content for those who want more. I haven't talked about Terra Nil on the Steam Deck yet, but want to mention that it's perfectly playable, if not preferable. Everything in the game can be controlled with a mouse, so similarly the right trackpad on the Steam Deck is a good way to go, even if it tended to cramp my hand after a bit. But performance is a mixed bag, with each run generally starting at 60 frames per second and hovering around 40 to 50 or even less as the screen gets busier. Those who don't mind locking at 40 FPS should have a pretty smooth experience. Otherwise, it's good enough, but a bit inconsistent and definitely drains the battery quickly. Honestly, I don't know shit about plants or gardening. In real life, my version of a green thumb is probably more like a sickly gray one, but nevertheless, Terranil won me over on all fronts. It's original, deeply compelling, beautifully presented, strategic without being frustrating, and immensely polished, with no noticeable bugs and plenty of quality of life features that respect the player's time. I've never played anything quite like it, but so far it's one of my favorite games I've played in a while, and an easy pick for a golden genie, exceeding my already lofty expectations. And as the cherry on top, it's hard not to appeal to me as an animal lover when 8% of the game's profits go to the Endangered Wildlife Trust. In nearly every respect, Terra Nil is an absolute winner.